102.2 Jazz FM, the jazz station, with Chris Phillips and Jez Nelson playing you some bad tunes. London's new Jazz FM station began broadcasting earlier this month. The station's co-founder, Dave Lee, explained why he thought now was a good time to start. Something new has happened in this, in this town because young people have turned to jazz. We have bebop discos, we have young DJs like Giles Peterson who have created, maybe he did it, I don't know, but he certainly reflects an enormous interest among young people. So we're going to have uh, to cover the age groups from maybe 17 to about 77, from country blues right across to the most avant-garde jazz. The variety of influences on the London jazz scene is obvious from the range of dancing styles on display in the clubs. <laughs> DJ Giles Peterson explains further. We've got a whole kind of new fresh, original dance thing happening here, which takes moves from the past, Nicholas Brothers, trained movements from ballet, but it's also merging that with hip-hop and house moves and coming up with something totally original and exclusive, and that's great, you know, so the dance thing is uh, one of the most important things about what's happening in this country, and it's really important that some of the bands that are coming through are going to be performing with dancers, not choreographed, freeform. Performing specially for Rapido with Courtney Pine is rising sax star Steve Williamson. He describes the kind of audiences he's been playing to. I get all sorts of people coming up to me and they're saying, oh, I'm into rock music, but um, I didn't think I'd like your music, but it's really good. And you know, this is the first jazz concert I've ever been to. And <laughs> all sorts of people come. All sorts of people come to the gigs. You know, and that's, that's a great thing at the moment. Courtney Pine, comfortably established as a world-class performer, believes his music has a British identity. What makes me a British musician? I suppose it's, it's the fact of my influences. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious, like in the set we play, we play um, a tune which was based, which was used, the Andy Pandy song. It's like a nursery rhyme. Uh, we actually play it in the set. And somebody from, I don't know, Switzerland wouldn't know that, that song. Some from America wouldn't know that song, but we actually play it because we're from this country. Poetic vibes, a masculine bass, uh uh, a flute and drums, I pick up the pace. Piano keys on a spiraling flight, that's jazz, or oh, tree in black and white, uh uh, a brilliant colors, glowing hues, intimate expression. Jalal Nuridin of the influential American band The Last Poets recently moved to Britain. He's convinced the future of jazz lies here. I would like the artists here in England, you know, to develop and reach their maximum potential because here I feel like they, they picked up where America left off at because America's not generating anything new. They're just repeating, you know, what they've already done. You know, whereas here in England and in France and other parts of Europe and other parts of the world, you know, they're picking up on it and, and taking it to the next level. And that's what I'm about. As James Brown says, I'm a contemporary artist. <laughs> The really nice thing about it, you can't really pigeonhole the crowd. You can't pigeonhole the music anymore. Not only are the crowd changing, but you know, you're getting rappers playing with jazz musicians, Public Enemy with Branford Marsalis, De La Soul sampling Ray Charles, the Jungle Brothers sampling Flora Purim and Aieto. It's a complete sort of mix 
And that's the 90s, and that's where music's going, and jazz is at the forefront of that.